What's up guys, it's Ken here with Black Body Mystery. Today I got another story time for you. We're gonna go into the events of the Dragon Ball Z sale game. But before I get started, slap, like, and share. That's the best way to support the channel. So sale is an Android that was created by Dr. Jero, but we're not gonna go into the Android saga as that will be too long. Uh, we're gonna go right into the sale game. So sale that was going up against the Z Fighters, that we saw in the episode. That cell is from the future, and that cell wasn't able to get full power or full perfect cell form. So what he did was he killed Trunks and got into the time machine and went back to what we believe is the present to be able to go up against the Z Fighters and obtain perfect cell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over to Ida. Ida's gonna be my special guest narrator that's gonna go right into the cell game. The saga begins with Cell's announcement of the Cell Games, which will be held 10 days after his television broadcast. This is an invitation for all of you to attend a little tournament I'll call the Cell Games. Goku and Gohan emerge from the hyperbolic time chamber, mastering Super Saiyan full power. Gohan's appearance comes as a surprise to the others especially Piccolo and Chi-Chi, as he now has greater muscle mass and is taller than before. Using instant transmission, Goku visits Cell at the tournament platform in order to gain an understanding of his power. I'll be your first opponent, so leave everyone out of this until we meet in the ring. Agreed. You will pay for your crimes. He then transmits himself back to the lookout where the others are waiting. They ask Goku if he thinks he will be able to defeat Cell, and Goku calmly laughs it off claiming that he does not really know and thinks Cell would probably beat him into the ground. This comes as a surprise to the others as they do not understand why Goku was acting so aloof. Piccolo then reminds Goku that he and Gohan can go back to the hyperbolic time chamber for one more day, but Goku refuses the offer. Once again, this comes as a surprise to the others. Goku tells them that he and Gohan will be training outside of the chamber rather than subject their bodies to any more strain. This agitates Vegeta, who expresses his anger that Goku is always one step ahead of him, and he wonders exactly what secret Goku is hiding. visit to Korin and ask if he can determine how Goku's power measures up against Cell. Korin deduces that Cell is stronger, and Goku once again laughs it off, claiming that he discovered a great secret while in the hyperbolic time chamber, which comes as a surprise to Gohan. For the next nine days, most of the Z fighters use their time to train, though Goku and Gohan train for only three days and spend the remaining six resting. Goku also pays a visit to Nunamic and asks Dende to become the new guardian of Earth. Eager to see Gohan again, Dende accepts the offer and creates a new Shenron, capable of granting three wishes, though this could be reduced to two if one wish took too much effort. When 
the tournament commences, Goku decides he would be the first one to fight Perfect Cell. However, the world champion Mr. Satan, along with his students in combat, Karoni and Kuroski, attempt to fight Perfect Cell first, though each of them are easily flicked away and disqualified. Mr. Satan then attempts to attack Cell with a slew of punches and kicks only to be knocked into the mountains. After this, throughout the entire tournament, Mr. Satan decides to claim he is suffering from intense stomach pains in order to avoid fighting Cell. He also calls the techniques in the ring tricks or illusions. Goku and Perfect Cell begin to battle and in a heated display of power, technique, and ability. To no one's surprise, Goku seems to be able to keep up against the mechanically engineered monster. performing various moves such as the Death Beam and Kamehameha. Perfect Cell battled for a while until Perfect Cell grew tired of being confined to the small ring. So Perfect Cell destroyed the ring. He made the battle an all-out fight just to make things more interesting for him. This maybe was a fight. Perfect Cell was notably a friend as Goku powered up the enemy. Goku who tricked him by performing instant transmission to teleport directly in front of Perfect Cell and unleash the blast on him. The entire top half of Perfect Cell was disintegrated. The Z Warrior seemed content until the remains of Perfect Cell jumped to its feet and regenerated. Goku knew that if he continued the Earth would be destroyed, or Perfect Cell and himself would die fighting each other. Goku suddenly forfeited the match to Perfect Cell and surrendered. He reasoned that only one person could defeat Perfect Cell. When Goku revealed his son Gohan as his pick to fight, the Z Fighters were furious, notably Vegeta and Piccolo, and Perfect Cell was amused. Before Gohan and Cell began to fight, Goku asked Krillin for a sensu bean, which he threw to Cell, surprising everyone. Goku explained to the Z Fighters that Cell was worn out from their fight so it would not be fair. Krillin argues and even thought that Goku got a quote-unquote screw loose or something. Cell gladly eats the sensu bean and proceeds with the fight. It took a while for the battle to commence between Gohan and Perfect Cell, and even longer for Gohan to be seen. As a full power Super Saiyan, he is no better than his father and the Z-Fighters were noticeably weary, except Goku. As the battle continued, Gohan told Perfect Cell to stop fighting as the power he could harness when he becomes enraged would destroy everything. However, this only fueled Perfect Cell's desire to push Gohan to that limit, much to Gohan's horror. Finally, Android 16 decided to destroy Perfect Cell himself with the self-destruction device in his body. He wrapped his arms around Perfect Cell's torso with the purpose of killing them both. To Android's surprise, Krillin informs that the bomb had been removed by Bulma when she reprogrammed him earlier during repairs. Perfect Cell then gained the upper hand and destroyed all of Android 16 but his head, which rolled over the battlefield. Perfect Cell even claimed that even if the bomb did blow up, he would most likely not be affected too much despite his fearful look when he found out what Android 16 was intended to do.
perfect cell then created seven smaller blue versions of himself from his tail, consisting them Cell Jr. After they were born, he ordered them to attack the Z fighters to kill them. Each Cell Jr. was close to the power of Perfect Cell himself. Only Vegeta and Future Jr. and the Super Saiyan Second Grade form, and Piccolo managed to hold them off for a while, but eventually all of them were brutally beaten up, even Goku who was weakened from his fight with Perfect Cell. As Gohan watched these maniacal Cell Juniors heartlessly beat his friends and family, he became enraged, but it was still not enough. Perfect Cell, noticing Gohan's anger, ordered the Cell Juniors to kill everyone. At this point, Hercule discovered the head of Android 6, Teen, which surprisingly could still talk. Android 16 pleaded with Hercule to take him near Gohan, throw him if he had to, for the sake of the world. Hercule complied despite his fear, and the android's head landed between Gohan and Cell. Android 16 gave some advice and words of encouragement to Gohan, saying it was okay to fight sometimes to defend loved ones and to protect the world he loved. Perfect Cell overhearing this claimed that this was good advice and promptly crushed Android 16's head beneath his foot. This was the boiling point when Gohan snapped. And I won't watch this anymore! This enraged Gohan to his very limits and pushed him to a new level, Super Saiyan 2. The Super Saiyan level ascended beyond a Super Saiyan. Perfect Cell was pleased when Gohan reached this form, but Gohan's first action was mercilessly taking down the smaller Cell Juniors, which he defeated in a single hit each. The already astounded Z Warriors, with the exception of Goku, were amazed as Gohan and Perfect Cell began to battle with Gohan dominating the powerful android. Perfect Cell truly learned fear when Gohan began dodging all of his attacks, taunting him and overpowering even his strongest Kamehameha at point blank range. This almost destroyed Cell, but Gohan decided to let Cell suffer for a while, which made Goku order Gohan to kill Cell. But it was too late. 
cell regenerated using piccolo cells. Making the same mistake Future Trunks made earlier, he began a transformation that reduced his speed drastically, making him unable to hit Gohan. After Gohan had had enough of dodging cells, he took Cell in the face and then in the stomach. The kick to the stomach was hard enough to make Cell regurgitate Android 18, which made him revert to his semi-perfect form. Enraged, semi-perfect Cell threatened to destroy the whole planet and began to self-destruct. Goku decided to step in because if he did not, semi-perfect Cell would have killed himself, destroying the planet with him. Goku used the instant transmission to reach the My Perfect Cell and then transmitted them both to King Kai's planet, which was subsequently destroyed. But to their surprise, a strong wind began to blow and a tremendously powerful force came upon them. Cell was back, a single death beam by Cell hailed Future Trunks and killed him. He came back in his perfect form due to the fact that his cells stored the memory of his birth. And he was exponentially stronger than before because his core remained unharmed, and from it he had regenerated. He had become a lot stronger thanks to the Saiyan cells inside him which after a near-death experience increased his power dramatically. This power increase brought Cell up to a form he called Ultimate Perfection. Previously distraught Gohan was in fact pleased to see Super Perfect Cell at the time and hoped to avenge his father. Vegeta, seeing his own son get killed by Super Perfect Cell, became stunned but this soon turned into anger as he went into a berserk rage against Super Perfect Cell. Despite everyone telling him that future chunks could be revived by the Dragon Ball, Vegeta, who went Super Saiyan, attacked Super Perfect Cell mercilessly and attacked him with an array of energy blasts. It was absolutely hopeless, however, as Super Perfect Cell gave one hit to Vegeta that knocked him out and almost killed him. He was about to kill Vegeta off with a heat blast. But Gohan intercepted the blast with his own arm. He came badly damaged and hung limply at his side. Vegeta, in a rare moment, actually apologized to Gohan. Super Perfect Cell jumped back and prepared for attack. Perfect Cell fired his solar Kamehameha at Gohan, which is stated by himself to have enough energy to destroy the entire solar system that they reside in. After losing use of one of his arms and seeing how much stronger Cell was now, Gohan seemingly lost all hope of destroying Super Perfect Cell and gave up until he heard Goku communicating to him from the other world via King Kai. Goku encouraged Gohan to believe in his power, and with newfound hope, Gohan prepared a one coming on the The battle between the Kamehameha waves proved intense, as Tien, Piccolo, Vegeta, Krillin, and Yamcha watched. They began to doubt Gohan's power. In a heated battle between Gohan and Super Perfect Cell, the Kamehameha wave grew and grew. Even though Cell nearly overtook Gohan several times, Gohan was aided by his father during the battle who encouraged him and supported him against Super Perfect Cell. With this encouragement, Gohan was finally in the right state of mind to put forth his full power, which seemingly brought the Kamehameha duel to a standstill. Everyone but Vegeta also assisted him in a four-sided attack. The distraction helped Gohan push his power even further, but it was still not enough. Vegeta, caught in his pride, ponders over whether to go help Gohan or stay on the sidelines. Finally, Vegeta's better side brought him to power up to maximum and go help Gohan.
Even though Gohan was giving it all of his power, Super Perfect Cell begins to take a huge upper hand in the struggle once again, which leaves everyone, even Goku and Gohan, very worried. Cell was about to fully overtake Gohan, and the Earth and everything on it was about to be destroyed. And suddenly, a surprise key blast from Vegeta with all of his remaining stuff leaves Super Perfect Cell a bit stunned and very distracted. Gohan seizes the opportunity encouraged by Goku and unleashes all the rest of his strength into the Kamehameha wave, which overwhelms Super Perfect Cell's Kamehameha and envelopes him in the enormous wave. As Super Perfect Cell's body disintegrates, it is obvious Super Perfect Cell cannot understand that he has been defeated. His core is the last thing to burn up in the Kamehameha, and its destruction marks the moment of Super Perfect Cell's death. Everyone was exhausted, especially Gohan, who had used up nearly all of his energy to defeat Super Perfect Cell. Of course, despite his extreme fatigue and injuries, Gohan could only smile as the G-Fighters looked upon him with pride and as Goku told him how proud he was of him. After the battle ends, the heroes made their way to Kami's lookout where Dende healed Gohan and then Android 18, who Yamcha was scared of. After that, Gohan told everyone Krillin has a crush on Android 18. Super Perfect Cell was gone, but so was Goku. Warriors attempted to wish him back after wishing all of Cell's victims back, this included future chunks, but failed to revive Goku because he had already been wished back to life once before, and Shinron cannot revive a person more than once. However, Goku decided to stay in other world after explaining that he seems to attract evil people, so it would be better for Earth to live in peace without him. He also said that Gohan surpassed him greatly now so there would be no worries if another threat came. With a second wish, Krillin wanted the androids to be wished into people due to his crush on Android 18, but Shinran could not grant the wish, as both androids were stronger than him and he could not change anything about their persons. So, Krillin instead wished that the bombs inside both of them were removed. This Shinran could do with ease. Android 18, who had been hiding, revealed herself and got angry at Krillin for thinking that would soften her feeling for any of them, and partially out of Krillin mistaking Android 17 for her boyfriend instead of her twin brother. She then flew off, but not before saying, see you later. There you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed that story time and the great adventure we just went over in the Fail Saga. I'll catch you guys next time. Remember, the best way to support the channel is slap that like button, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys later.